Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rekach, Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who taught me this truth, and salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amor Gabar, back with another lesson. Lord willing to edify and defeat the lambs of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, through the Holy Spirit, Rekach, Wadash. Now, um, you know, this article was sent to me by Apostle Ram Lab, so I just wanted to do a quick lesson on it. And... You know, quite, find it quite interesting. This is from the Market Watch, and it says, New York City is dead forever, according to this proud New Yorker. New York City is dead forever, according to this proud New Yorker. You know, and here you have a picture of New York City. This is around Times Square area, you know, a few blocks from where we used to teach on 34th and 7th. And it's absolutely dead. You know, the spirit of America is dead. You know, this is this is the greatest tourist attraction on the planet Earth. And look at it now, it's desolate. It looks just like how it looked in um the movie Um I Am Legend. When Will Smith was out there hunting for some deer and then them lions came out out of the bushes and, and started, you know, tackling that um that deer. That's this is what it looked like. You know, this is exactly what it looked like. And you know, Esau does a thing where he called what he calls predictive programming. Which the Lord put it in his spirit, you know, to do these things because he saw us proud like that, man. All right. He's proud like that, that he just he he just have to show or, or hide his truth in plain sight because he just, you know, believed that, you know, he won't be discovered. But little that you know, he's being discovered and has been discovered. So anyway, it says um, New York City is dead forever, according to this proud New Yorker. Now, I'm going to read this because, you know, hey. <laughs> Hey, this is what we've been waiting for, man. You know what I'm saying? This is what we've been waiting for. You know, all these years, you know, starting with our apostles and elders on down, them, them decades, you know, as brothers, you know, all these years that we just that we've been in truth, man. We we've been waiting for these days, man. For the for the joy, the joy to cease. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna read a little bit of this and then I'm gonna get the scriptures. It says, Will the city that never sleeps ever wake up? The answer is no. It says, not according to James. I'll touch a, a best-selling author from a former hedge fund manager and a former watch market co uh, columnist who says that New York City is dead forever. As, re as his residents come to grips with the reality of the coronavirus pandemic and what it means for the fate of the Big Apple. All right, because people are now coming to the reality of what's, what's happening. People, a lot of people lost their jobs, you know what I'm saying? Millions of people lost their jobs. You got to think about all the people that was that was employed within these um these circuses, you know, these these entertainment industries such as all these, you know, the you know, Yankee Stadium, Mets Stadium, Barclays Center and all these different stadiums, sports is gone. So all the thousands or hundreds of employees that used to work there, they're all gone. You know, nationwide, they're all gone. They have no job. You know? Your average moms and pops restaurants, they're gone. You know, a lot of things are just going. You know, this coronavirus crippled your your dreams, your hopes for 2020. You know, 2020 vision is dead for you people, but the 2020 vision for the elect and Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, ultimately Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah is is wide open. That vision is wide open. It's clear as day. All right. It says, um. I love, I love, quote, it says, I love New York when I first moved to NYC. It was a dream come true. Every corner was like a theater production happening right in front of me. So much personality, so many stories. He wrote in a blog post explaining why his temporary relocation might become permanent, more permanent. It says, I don't benefit from saying any of this. I love NYC. I was born there. I lived there st forever. I still live there. I love everything about NYC. I want 2019 back. But this time is different. You people ain't gonna get 2019 back, man. You know? How scriptures say in Proverbs, how long you simple ones will you love simplicity? Alright? How long are you people gonna love your simplicity and scorn the delight in their scorning? You know, people want 2019 back when they could party and bullshit and be all wicked, you know, make all their money, you know, and do whatever it is they used to do. Go out there to the clubs, the bars, and and just live live um undisciplined. You know, live live carelessly. You know, people want 2019 back, but you're not going to get it back. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get it back. According to the scriptures, 
there's a time and a place for everything, and we living at the time of the end. It says Altucha is isn't alone, of course. The New York Times back in June asked the agonizing question: Is New York City worth it anymore? Amid a mass exodus of estimated 42, I mean 420, 420,000 residents between March and May when the coronavirus was blowing up. So that's how many people left. You know, they left them on um, the New York City sky um, skyscrapers and, and, and high rises. They they left it. They abandoned it. They them penthouses. They abandoned it. You know, they left. They didn't re-sign that lease. For one, most of these Edomites moved into moved in those areas because of their jobs. You know, those blue collar jobs or whatever. You know them 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 high paying office jobs. They they don't they no longer exist. So. You know, you're not going to be able to pay them uh, $7,000, $10,000 apartment rent. All that's out the window. It says in July there was a record 13,117 vacant apartments across Manhattan, according to a report by Douglas Elliman and Miller Samuel Real Estate Appraiser and Consultants. A year ago, that number was 5,912, so it more than doubled. All right, it almost tripled. Also, new leases signing fell by about 23%, resulting in a drop in rental prices. So now, them high-end apartments is, is, is dropping to accommodate for what people can afford, which people ain't really affording anything, man. Majority of people are unemployment. You know, the unemployment tax is $600, expired about two, three weeks ago. You know? So, people are struggling. And Barakatah Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh all praise to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh for this, man. You know, it says with most New York, New York City offices closed, companies considered downsizing, a.k.a. laying people off or heading for the suburbs. To be fair, New York may be feeling the most profound impact, but several cities have been hit hard. Check out the staggering stats on San Francisco, for example. Show you a little chart or a chart here about um, what it says inventory from February 2020 MSA. A city proper. I didn't really look into that chart yet, but um, I'm gonna show it here. So if you're interested, you can look at it. And this is from Zillow, you know, which is a housing, you know, you could rent, buy, or you know, whatever. It says, as for the Times story, along with the gloom, there was also a message of hope from diehards believing that New York history of flight and resurgence will repeat itself. It won't. It says, these times of crisis, then things get tough in the city. It's where I want to be. It's where my neighbors are. One local photographer told, told the paper, I've been walking around exploring and the city's becoming even more fascinating during a time like this. Now, let me go to let me go to scriptures, man, because, you know, the Lord, you know, foretold these things to happen. All right. The Lord said these things were going to happen. So um let me go to first I'll go to um I go to Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and I'll start too it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart sorrow is better than laughter for by sadness of the countenance the heart is made better all right, sorrow is better than laughter. The scripture says better go to the house of mourning. Now, the house, the house of mourning is here in this truth. All right, you, we mourn because we know the truth. All right, we we mourn because it's going to say here in the, uh, verse 7. I'm going to read it. I'm going to jump real quick and read it. It says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and to give destroy a heart. That's why we mourn because we we understand that we're in oppression. And the scripture is also saying, also saying Ecclesiastes that... um. With much, with much, which much, excuse me, with much wisdom comes much grief. All right, so the more you know, the more you grief. The more you understand, the more wisdom you understand. The more wisdom you have, I should say, the more you know, the more you become grief in this society because it's full of wickedness, man. It's full of absolute wickedness, and the only way that righteousness can be restored is if this kingdom go down first. All right, so for the men. Of the Lord that's out there, that's been out there prophesying and teaching in His in His Word and His and His name, Yahweh Shai, We've been in the house of mourning, all right. And people, 
I remember, man, clear as day. We used to be out on 34th Street. We, used to, You know, we out there in the streets, you know, through the spirit every Saturday. But when we was on 34, which is a hot spot, so much traffic, so much commerce, so much people, thousands, you know, there was thousands of people in one day, man, on one Saturday. You know, people would, would say, oh, we're negative. No, everybody want to, nobody want to stop and listen. You know, people want to argue and debate with us because we are here talking about the end of the world. We're here, t we were there telling you that America is going to be destroyed, that martial law is going to be declared, that the mark of the beast is going to be made mandatory, that there's going to be a financial crisis, an economic crisis, that there's going to be a false flag attack that's going to happen and, and things are going to change, so on and so forth. We was there telling you through the spirit. Starting with the apostles on down. And people would always say, oh, you people are negative. Or, and they go along their way. Go to some comedy club. Some comedy show. Go to the movie theaters with their date. You know, go out to eat. Feast. You know what I'm saying? But while we were, on the, while we were at the house of mourning, which are them street corners, like the scriptures say, wisdom cry without, without she uttered from voice in the streets. All right? So us being on, you know, in the house of mourning, we're preparing ourselves for what's happening right now. Okay, because now not so many people are, are feasting anymore. Not not so many people are jolly anymore. You know. So it says sorrow is better than laughter for by sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. All right. So sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance is the heart made better. The mind. All right. Made better. And now it says the heart of the wise is in a house of mourning. But the heart of a fool is in the house of mirth. All these people, man. All these people, these naysayers, these scorners and scoffers. You know, everybody that doubted. Well, guess what? They ain't even seen nothing yet, man. Wait till this devil come down with more wrath, with great wrath. All right? Then you people are going to be in for a rude awakening. But, you know, according to this article, some people are already starting to feel the effects of what it is to be, you know, living in these end times. You know? So it says, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools, you know, because the wise is still out there in the street corners, man. Like the scriptures say, um, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, while the evil days come not, you know. Now we're approaching these evil days and the time is coming where it's going to be impossible for us to be in the street corners. All right, there's going to be an end to us being on the street corners. Like the scriptures say in Amos that the Lord is going to send a famine of, of the word. All right, so it's going to be impossible for us to go in the street corners. Because Esau is making it, you know, to where these laws are going to make it impossible for people to gather, you know, gather together in the corners and or just gather and, and, and socialize or, you know, be amongst each other in groups or whatever the case is. And then eventually what he's going to do is attack. He's going to attack the Internet, say that the Internet is causing too much, uh, is spreading too much false news, fake news, and is going against their agenda. So they're going to. Say that everybody on the internet is 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 you know spreading false information. Really, is targeting the men of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Okay. So um, let me go to um the book of Luke, chapter six, and I'll start at twenty three. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did the fathers did the fathers unto the prophets. All right. Now, what is that talking about? Let me read up. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil, for the son of man's sake, for Yahweh's sake. All right. But the scriptures say, rejoice and rejoice when that happens. All right, because great is our our reward, man. Everybody that that you know. Called us evil, called us names, called us this, separated themselves from us, people that left us because of this truth, Pe you know, people that fired us because of this truth, people that hated you because of this truth. Hey, be blessed for that, man. You know, because they did the same thing to the prophets before us. You know, and ultimately our reward is going to be great in heaven. So it says, But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you, rich people of this world, because you receive your consolation. All right, now, now there's not there's not so much money to be made in Hollywood like there was, man. You know, there's not so much money to be made. Period. All right, things are changing. You know, the, uh, people know in their spirit that things are changing, man. But it's something called cognitive dissonance, man. Where despite the you know the evidence that's that's pointing towards this thing happening, 
you know, it goes against their core beliefs. So they, they want to live in denial. All right. But they're going to die in their ignorance. You know, the world is changing, man. And it's changing for the better. The Lord is getting ready to establish his kingdom on this earth. So it says, woe unto you that are rich for you receive your consolation, your second prize. Woe unto all you jakes that are rich. You sold out to Esau in any way, fashion or form. You made an agreement with the devil. Woe unto you, man. I mean, death unto you. All right. It says, woe unto you that are full for you shall hunger. And woe unto you that laugh now for you shall mourn and weep. So all you people that, that are full, all right, you're going to hunger in these days to come because the Lord is not going to provide for you. All right. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. All you that will will, will all joy, joy, joyous and jolly and laughing and, and, and just living it up. Hey, you're going to mourn and weep, man. When all hell break loose, when they cut off your, your bread supply, your food supply, your water supply, when they shut them lights out. All right. When they shut it out, you know, blackouts, you know, when they when they, they, they knock that grid off. A lot of you people are going to feel it, man. All right. And this message is, is is for repentance, man. All right? Repentance to who? The Israelites. Okay? It says, Woe unto you when, when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Now, you got people out there being well spoken of, you know, because they, they, they're preaching smooth things unto the people, so everybody's going to talk good about them. But if you're coming out telling people that their, 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 their beloved kingdom is about to be destroyed, you know, that they're going off for their wickedness and, and telling them, you know, rebuking them, they're going to hate you. All right? This is um Isaiah chapter 65, and I'll start at 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. All right? My servants shall eat, but ye, eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, and ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All right, the tables are going to turn, man. And like the scripture said, then shall be made known who am I chosen. Okay? Behold, my, ser my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. You know? Like that article. In New York City, Times Square, the city I never sleep is sleep. It's knocked out. The most high, the most high sucker punched it, man. It's knocked out cold. All right, and things ain't gonna go back to normal. All right, Esau is talking about this new normal, which normal when you when you go into the word etymology, is uh it goes it, it goes into the word order. When something is normal, that's the order of things. So this new normal is this new order. All right, this new world order. All right, so things ain't gonna be like how it was in 2019, party and bullshit. You know, do as you please, go out, club, Miami, Carnival, you know, Dominican Republic, all these places, man. Most of us shut things down. All right. And the servants of the Lord, the men that, that I know, the men that are in his truth, the hopeful elect are in a joyful spirit, in a, you know, because we know we see these things happening. All right. We've seen these things come to pass. So our spirit is in joy. You know what I'm saying? And our spirit is also. Just geared, geared for, for the Lord to have mercy on us, man. These evil days to come also, you know? So, it's, hey, man, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. Like the scriptures say that many many um, prophets, and, and I believe many prophets and kings have desired to see the things which you see, you know? And we are witnessing the day of the Lord, you know, being ushered in, man. All right? Barak at the Yahweh Hashem Yahweh for this, you know? And ultimately for... Having us in his truth, and may the Lord keep us. It says, Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry of sorrow, for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So all these people that have ever done us wrong, you know, are gonna cry, they're gonna howl, they're gonna be in, in dire straits, man. Alright. So, last but not least, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, verse 10. It says the city of confusion is broken down. That's talking about America. America, the word Babylon, America is Babylon. Babylon means confusion. All right, confusion means mixed together. Khan means together. Fusion means mixed. All right. So America is mixed together with everything under the sun. Philosophy, religion, you know, ideology, people, you know, anything you could think of, America is mixed with, mixed therein with. All right. 
It's a great melting pot. So the city of confusion is broken down and is being broken down right now systematically. And the Lord is doing it. You know, he's using these elites to do it. All right. But ultimately, it's the hand of the Lord forcing these people to do their thing. All right. Or to do his thing. Because at the end of the day, this marks the downfall of Esau Edom. Like the scriptures say, Jacob is, um, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So this is it for the so-called white man, man. All right. This is it. <laughs> it says, every house is shut up. That no man may come in. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Alright. Esau is, is, is doing what also? He's, he's, he's shutting down them, them borders. Alright. You got over there in Chicago. I believe 9 o'clock or something like that. They. Um, downtown Chicago. If I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. I read where they, they, they're raising bridges now. man. Alright. In the shopping center or shopping district. They're raising bridges. You know. And, and there's going to be a lot more of that. You know, raising bridges, setting up checkpoints that nobody may cross a certain bridge or cross into another uh, uh, state. All right. The airline industry is dead. Nobody, nobody's traveling, you know. So it says there is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened and mirth of the land is gone. Now, wine is talking about wisdom. All right. People can be crying for this wisdom. You know, like I quoted um, in Amos. That the Lord is going to send a famine, not of bread nor water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. All right. People are going to be crying and begging for that wisdom, for that truth, for that understanding as to what's going on. So all joy is darkened and all the mirth of the land is gone. You know, and Esau eventually is going to come with his second shutdown. We are approaching fall. All right. We're in August 17th already. All right. September is in less than two weeks. You know, mid-September you have flu season. October, November starts to get cold. December is cold. So, hey, man, things are going to change drastically. All right. Whatever little mirth these people are holding on to is going to be gone real soon. It says, in the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction. It says, when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, they shall be as a shaking of an olive tree and as a gleaning of a grape when the venture is done. All right, now the Lord is going to ultimately waste this place called America. He's going to waste this land. All right, he's going to waste it, man. All right, like the scriptures also say, the um, there's going to be a shaking of the Lord's hand over the land of Egypt, which is talking about here in America. All right, the Lord is shaking things up, man. All right, so, you know, that was, that was it. That was all the scriptures I had. And going back to this article, New York City is dead forever. You know, and this is coming out of the mouth of a proud New Yorker, quote unquote proud. All right. Proud go before fall. America. Uh, well, New York is a proud place, man. Everybody in New York is proud from the women to the men. Everybody's proud. You can't tell nobody in New York nothing, man. You know, but that's America as a whole. America is proud. Esau is proud. And all the pride is being destroyed right before your eyes. So, you know, I just want to bring this article out through the spirit, you know. You know, so hey, Lord, when I'm ending here, Lord, when it was an edifying lesson. Till next time, I say shalom.